Welcome back to another episode of Podcast with Mark 45. Today, we have another special guest. That's right. I hope you guys enjoyed our first special guest episode. It's not out yet at the time of this recording, so I have no idea how well it will do. But we have a second guest today, and it's a fellow YouTuber, a, a friend of mine that I met as we converge on the same platform on YouTube. So I figured, why not let's bring him in for a little chat. And this is our guest here, Jaden Bird. Hello, everyone. My name is Jaden. Uh, I have a YouTube channel called Jaden. Um, yeah, I just kind of post whatever I want. I met Ryan first year of university and uh, found out that he had a YouTube channel. And I saw that he had 7,000 subscribers, and I thought that was pretty cool. So, yeah. It was not an easy gain, but yeah. <laughs> And now I have uh, now we've started a new program with this podcast. Um, so basically, today's episode is very lackluster. Obviously, our last uh, episode with Denny, we just talked about his cryptocurrency stuff. So it was very informative and very educational. Today, we're just here to just look at your stuff. You're just showing us some of your work and the retention you got out of it. So why don't we start off? Just talk a little bit more about yourself. Like, okay, why did you do YouTube and all that? Yeah, so. Pretty much my whole life, me and my brother have been making, we've been making like videos. Um, we would make, like we would buy little Mario stuffed animals and we would like make them fight each other and stuff. And we had recorded on our old MacBook. Um, and like we would we'd do that all the time. And then um, when I was in grade nine, I believe, my brother, he was like, he really wanted to start a YouTube channel. And then, you know, being the younger brother, it was just, I was always forced to go along with him and, and do whatever he, he wanted to do and help him out. So uh, we started making YouTube channel, or uh, we started a YouTube channel. We started making YouTube videos there. Um, we would do just like, just like stupid, like, it was kind of like more of like a dude perfect thing where we'd like do battles and, and stuff like that. But Nothing really ever came from it, um, and then he he was really into Smash Bros. So we started doing like Smash Bros. content where he would like we'd just play, and then he would make like little montages of like all our best best clips and stuff like that. And then it started to get a little bit of traction. Like he got like decent views, but I didn't actually. I still wouldn't like really call myself a YouTuber because I don't like really do YouTube like full time at all or anything like that, or like have a consistent upload schedule. But I remember the first video I uploaded, I was, I'm a big hockey fan. So I was watching a, a hockey game and then there's one player that did this really sick move. And then after the game, I went on YouTube to see if I could find it and watch it again. And I couldn't, but I found it on some other website. So I just screen recorded it oh. and then posted it to my YouTube. <laughs> That's actually pretty sick. <laughs> and then overnight, overnight it had like, I think it had like 90,000 views and I was like, what? This is crazy. Of a screen recording. Of a screen recording. There's no audio, no nothing. It's still on my channel. You guys can watch it if you want. Um, but yeah, that was the first YouTube video I uploaded. And then I don't think I uploaded for a long time until um, I started doing videos for school projects. Um, and then instead of, you know, putting it on a physical, like, hard drive or something and giving it to my teachers, I would just upload it to my YouTube channel and then just give them the link that way because I thought it was easier. And then, yeah, for some reason, people started to subscribe to me, but it was, like, very little. Like You're currently on, like, what, 2,000? Yeah, right now I have 2,400, but when I was uploading the school projects, I think the max I got to was, like, 60. So like, Oh, it's still quite a growth. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I was, like, surprised because, you know, it was just my school projects, and I was like, why are people subscribing? Um, and then, yeah, fast forward to last spring so just coming up to a year ago um i did another school project um it's a the project was to do like folly work so take take all the sound out of a video and then do my own sounds um so i decided to do that for a high school musical like clip and then yeah it just it blew up. I was getting like for a week, I think I was getting like a hundred subscribers a day, which was crazy. So I went from like 60 subscribers to a thousand in like two weeks. So, and then now it's just been consistently getting views. Um, but I haven't really done much since, but 
it's kind of kind of the whole story up until now but yeah interesting so most of the time you just it was just because of your brother and you're just yeah. following his fault for sure yeah a lot of the stuff that i that i did would be to help him out so that's kind of where i got my start and like even with you know cameras and making videos it's always like he would get into it first and then he would show me and then so and he, then he kind, kind of like took you under his wing or yeah, like a mentorship sure, yeah. sort of thing yeah growing up have you like watched a lot of youtubers which is like you you came across this one guy and you're like oh he's he makes some pretty good content and just start binging him like i i've had that phase i think middle school i used to watch a lot of minecraft youtubers growing up and there is this one youtuber i'm not going to say his name because yeah um <laughs> let's just say he's fallen off now uh, he used to post like two videos a day and I would actually like anticipate. I'll be like very excited to watch it because like it's a new Minecraft content. And usually he did like uh, mod showcases. He explored people's maps. Like it was it was those simple times. It was very it was just pure entertainment. And then uh, I think the first ever YouTube channel I saw was uh, he was a Lego YouTuber, but he solely focused on doing Lego Bionicles back then. And then Bionicle retired. <laughs> And then Bionicle retired, and then they replaced it with this theme called Hero Factory. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I was, I was, Hero Factory yeah, I was very, I, that actually intrigued me. I was like, oh, these are some interesting buildable action figures. So I watched him like review it pretty much. That's how I got the idea, the, the concept of reviewing something on video, like you're taking a product and and anal- and just give your thoughts about it pretty much. So like, uh, uh, that was that was my experience. I was like, was it like something similar for you? Yeah, so my parents actually didn't let me and my brother have YouTube um, until I was in grade nine. So, like, it wasn't, I, I wasn't, like, very familiar with it. Um, but, like, I would, I, <laughs> I had the, the Dude Perfect app when I was a kid. Um, okay. Yeah, they had, like, a game. Um, and then on that app, they had, like, all their videos as well. So I'd, like, I'd watch Dude Perfect a lot. And I thought that they were so cool and, like, that their trick shot videos were sick and so like we would kind of got inspired by that but then when I started watching YouTube um I think the first YouTubers I subscribed to was like there was one hockey YouTuber um because I played hockey back then um and then um I still to this day I watch Cody Ko a lot um I'm not sure if you guys know him I think he's yeah he's he's really funny um and then, I don't know, I think now, because, like, you know, life gets busier, but if I'm going to sit down and watch YouTube, it, it's usually, like, a commentary YouTuber, like um, like Cody Ko or Danny Gonzalez or, like, Curtis Connor or Drew Gooden kind of guys. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you watch them, but they're really funny. Um, but, yeah, um, I, I don't think anyone kind of influenced my content because, like, I don't know, I think that, the stuff that I post is very much like, like me. Cause it's like, I don't really have like, like you, for example, have your like reviews and stuff like that. And that's like, that's kind of your niche. But like, for me, it's just like, I'm just kind of posting whatever just I posting have. whatever you want. Yeah. yeah I mean, so. that I started like that. Like I've said this origin story multiple times, but I think it's gonna be new for you. Like my channel started by accident. Mm. It was, it started when I, I was playing um, Star Wars Battlefront, like the old 2015 game, and I accidentally uploaded some of the gameplay footage. Yeah, acc- how did you accidentally? Because I was messing around with like the share buttons. I was like, oh, what does this do? I'm like on my old like PS4, and then and then the next day I just started getting comments like, wow, sick gameplay, and all that. I'm like, what just happened? And then yeah, that's that that's literally how my channel started. So I started with gaming content, and then just I just got. Uh, it was just very demotivating by the end like i I didn't see the thrill by the end because it's just like i I did i I had a Fortnite era when the game first came out um but then like after i think when COVID started it was really like like i didn't see the thrill in doing more gaming videos number one they take a lot of time to make and it seems like a niche like everyone was doing it so like what's the point i'm just fighting for views here and i'm not going to win in any way so i think when COVID started i was i that's kind of what inspired me to go back to my roots because i grew because my very first video it's not public 
but my very first video was a Lego set review. So I was like, maybe I should try revisiting that concept again. And then here we are. And uh, what's the what's the um, the kind of backstory to the name of Mark Forty Five? Ah, the common question. <laughs> so um, it's not based off the Iron Man suit. Okay. I found out it was the Iron Man suit after making the name. It was it was from a character from Hero Factory. Uh, he his, his they they call each character by their last names. But they all have a first name. So there is this specific hero that I, I was like, oh, he's a pretty good character. His name is Serge, but his first name was Mark. So I drew inspiration Serge. from there. If I'm remembering, was he the, the light gray one? No, he was the blue guy with the lightning. Oh, yes, yes. I remember him. I remember him. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I, I drew. So that was the first half. The 45 came from another YouTuber that I watched. And he did these Bionicle role plays where he just filmed himself bashing the action figures <laughs> together to create cool epic fight scenes and he had 45 in his URL. It wasn't his name, it was his URL. I don't know, I just saw him like, oh, why don't I just combine the two together? There you go. And that's how, that's how it happened. So it had nothing to do with the Iron Man suit. It had nothing to do with Iron Man. It was afterwards. I was like, oh, it's the Iron Man suit. <laughs> that's funny. You have some videos where it's like, it's covers of songs where it's like, where it's, more, it's more like music based. Mm. Like where, where that idea come from. The in in COVID, one of my friends got really into like, like the producing and mixing and stuff like that with music, um, and then this was like, it was right before the like kind of global shutdown. But like it was it was like you could only see a certain amount of people, and like you couldn't really like do too much. Um, so we would just like kind of go to his house, um, and then he would just like he would want us to record stuff and. Um, my family's pretty musical, like, my grandpa was in a band, so it's, like, I'd, I've always kind of been around music, um, so I was, like, something I was down to try, because it's, like, something I'd never done before, and I thought it was fun, um, <laughs> we ended up making a song about, about how much we hated COVID, but that'll, that'll never see the light of day, just because of how bad it was, um, and then fast forward to my senior year of high school um we were doing like a a grade 12 like talent show um because my teacher was like oh like so many of you guys are so talented like we should we should put something on for the school and then me and my friends were like oh no we we're, we're not gonna do that we're not gonna do that um but then i was like yo like we should we should not tell anyone but like we should make like we should make a song and we should make like a sick music video and stuff so you were trying to do it as a secretive yeah. thing. Yeah, we were. Tr it was going to be a surprise, and then I was like, "Oh, like what should it be about?" And then, um, previously, like a few weeks before, we had to like we we're it was English twelve, so we had to just like write a poem about something we saw in the classroom, and one of my friends um, wrote just like a like a stupid like love poem to the microwave <laughs> in the classroom, and then he was like, "Oh, like we Is should." That public? the the microwave poem yeah i don't know it's probably somewhere out there i'm not sure um but he was like he was like oh yeah we should we should base it off of this poem and i was like that's a great idea so we like we recorded like all right so i reached out to the friend that was we was good at producing and he um he like made this beat like this song and i was like yo that's perfect that's perfect <laughs> um so like uh, we got all my friends together we wrote our verses we like got the chorus um and it was like it was super fun and then my brother he recorded the music video for us and edited it all and it, like it looked great and then yeah we showed it to to the school as like a surprise and like everyone loved it and like just the other day when i was back home um i was i was grabbing something from my dad's classroom because he's a he's a, a teacher at my old school and then someone was like, oh, you're, you're the guy from the, the microwave song. And she was like in grade 11. So like still, still it like holds some, you know, legacy at, at my old school. But would like, you say yeah. is one of your greatest pieces of work? I mean, it might be, it is, it, it is kind of, yeah, it's what started my, my music career, I guess you could say, <laughs> but yeah, it's ended up doing pretty well. Um, I think it has like 1.6 K 
on YouTube. So that's yeah, that's not that's bad. Pretty solid was, for like an indie. Style, yeah, I much. think it was my first like video that wasn't the hockey clip that actually got over a thousand views. So I was pretty excited. And then we put it on Spotify as well. But I think I think it got like less than 150 streams. But we still made like 10 cents each from it. So. At least, uh, like the thing with Spotify is. Um, I don't know. Their revenue thing is really weird. Mm-hmm. It is weird for sure. Like um, previously, not with these guys, but I have I've had a music career as well. Okay. But since then, it's, I've just completely stopped. Like I've just I've just been solely focusing on YouTube. Mm-hmm. We had something like that. We I think we have ten songs that are still out right now. You can still listen to them right okay. now. Uh, maybe I'll show you some later. Um, I think the most we've made was seventy dollars. That's that's not bad. Yeah, but like in the grand scheme of things, f- from ten songs is like. Yeah, and then it costs to put it up onto the streaming platform. Also, well, the, so. the 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 distributor we signed with to put out those songs, they charge quite a hefty fee. Okay. We did it, so yeah. I went up. That's that stuff I won't even reveal. But it's like the process was not smooth. I think for the single that we put out, I think it was like, I think it was like twelve dollars for a whole year. So like. Oh yeah. It's not bad for a single if we actually got like decent streams, which what? we did. I did. I did wish there was like just like a one-time payment. Just you pay once, get your song out. Mm-hmm. That's it. Like the yearly thing, I personally think is kind of inconvenient. Yeah. Especially if like you're not like if it like you yeah, know, you're not. It's a just a for fun yeah. thing. Yeah, it's right? just a for fun thing. But, like, precisely. Yeah. When it comes to making YouTube, it's like an evolution. You start off with like a potato camera, maybe just your phone. I mean, heck, you start with a screen recorder. So it's like as as you as you progress through YouTube over time, it's like when did you decide that like okay, I need better equipment. Um, I mean, all throughout, I've just been using my phone. Um, I think that up until four videos ago I was using my phone for everything unless like someone else shot it for me um but I I ended up buying a camera in the summer not because of YouTube but because I wanted to I wanted to start doing or taking like sports videography more seriously and I was like if I'm gonna if I'm gonna do that I need you know an actual camera um but it's been nice like I'm I'm pretty now that I got my camera, I'm like really interested in, in like you know learning about all the settings and like what's best for this and what's best for that. So I feel like you can kind of tell in like my last few videos, like the I just uploaded one a couple or almost a couple weeks ago. And the I, Jeff Gibbons one, right? No, not the Jeff Gibbons one. The the Zelda one. Oh, the Zelda one. Oh yeah. But yeah, I think that you can see from that video, um, from like one from like a few months ago it shot with the same camera but one looks way better just because i you know got more comfortable with my camera and and learned how to use it properly but i think that i think that there's no no shame in just using you know a potato camera like you said or or your phone just because like you know if the passion's still there it's gonna be it's gonna be good content regardless if well you st- yeah it's, it's, you have a humble start mm-hmm. and then you just progress throughout the way um you guys remember my face reveal video that got memed so many times there was i filmed that with a webcam you had a face reveal video i remember he made like a ton ton of memes on it i'll bleep his name up by the way but like he made a ton of memes on it i do not remember <laughs> honestly yeah well i don't have that original video anymore because it got too embarrassing so it's it's gone but um i started off I started out wearing sunglasses as okay. to conceal my identity. <laughs> Eventually, I just gave up. It was like, if I'm going to do more IRL content, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just be myself. So, Your face is everywhere now. <laughs> yeah, my thumbnails. It's gone global. The thumbnails. <laughs> um, that's actually a good segue of what you were saying earlier. Like, you're... You you have an end goal in mind, which is like, what, to become like a, a sports phot- yeah. video photographer? So, two questions. One, what drew you to that? And number two, like, what do you hope to achieve out of it? 
Um, so what drew me to it is my whole life. I like I've I played sports. My parents put me in soccer when I was like really young. Um, I played hockey, um, played basketball, um, and it wasn't till it wasn't till grade eleven that I started like you know getting getting people to record my games, um, like my basketball games, so that I could have footage to to eventually send out to, you know, potential college coaches and stuff. Um, and then with that phone footage, you know, I would put together little mixes and stuff like that. Um, and then I was doing that for some of my other friends that, that were in high school after I graduated, like I would film, film for them just with my phone and stuff. And then I've always really enjoyed it. And like, there's, since I'm so like invested in the sports world, it's like, I see, you know, other really good videographers videos and I'm like, oh, those are sick. Like, I'd love to do something like that. And then, um, this year I started working with, with Spartan media, just going to games, shooting and making edits for them. And so it's mostly basketball. Yeah. Basketball is like my favorite sport, but I, I did some, I shot volleyball this year. I shot track and field. I shot rugby. So like, I, I kind of like did a little bit of everything, but I think like basketball is what I would want to keep pursuing. Um, and then with an end goal, I, f I feel like if I keep at it and I keep, you know, getting better and, and be willing to learn, um, from my mistakes and stuff that I could hopefully turn it into a career somewhere. So could you see yourself like in like the NBA or something in like the big leagues? Doing, I mean, that's, that would, I mean, I feel like even if it was for the Canucks shooting hockey, like I would, that would be like a dream come true. So oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I don't know. It's, it's still obviously a, a, a big goal and you know, it's not going to be easy at all. Of course. Um, but you know, since I'm in third year of university, it's, you kind of have to start thinking about what you, what you might want to do when you're graduated. And I feel like I've started to get my foot in the door in that area. So were you aware of this, ambition when you first stepped into uni or if it's like this is something no. you figure it out throughout the year this is something i wasn't even planning on doing it this year it was kind of it was kind of an accident um i i started taking a sports journalism class um it's like a okay. upper level um and the professor that teaches it is like the the media guy um and then part of the assignments was like to go out and and like do some shooting um and then so i i did i went to one basketball game and then i did some some shooting i did i mic'd up like i put a mic on one of the players oh yeah i think i saw that video yeah it's pretty sick um and then after that he was like the my boss now was like oh we need i want you shooting content i really want you shooting content and then and then yeah i've got to i went to seattle a few months ago or not sorry last month um, to shoot for track and field. I went to a big D1 school, so it was really cool. I've, you know, got to meet some, some of the athletes and get to know them a little bit more, and it's it's been really, really good, so, yeah. Well, that sounds like you have a lot planned on your plate. Yeah, yeah. that's why I've been so busy. <laughs> no, no, that, no, that's that's good. Yeah. Like, at least, like, ultimately, you're all working towards something in the mm -hmm. end. Like, you put, the, you put the work in now, eventually you'll, you'll get to reap exactly. the rewards. So you said you haven't really been inspired by a lot of like people that influence that influence your content ultimately. But has there any been like upper figures? Doesn't even have to be celebrities or just any like people you look up to that um, keep you going with this. I mean, I mean, it could be celebrities. Like, yeah, <laughs> um, my whole family obviously I look up to just because I want I I want to be like you know, successful like they are and, and have, you know, good, good careers, good jobs so I can raise a family and stuff like that. Um, in terms of celebrities, um, I think there's athletes that I look up to, um, just because they have, you know, pretty cool stories. Um, whether it be like, um, John Morant on, on the Memphis Grizzlies, he, he kind of had to work for everything he had because he wasn't, he wasn't like, very well known and and he like just barely got a chance to to get to where he was and he he took that little opportunity and now he's one of the the best players in the game so i think that that there's a lot to learn from that when it's just like even if 
things don't go the way that you're planning to like because obviously everyone has like a ideal vision of you know the next 10 years are going to be so good like i'm going to go to school i'm going to get to do this i'm going to blah 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 right and then you never know what's going to happen so i think that being able to to take the opportunities that are given to you um and kind of just work with it and and keep going take what you got and just do it with a smile on your face i think that that there's a lot of i mean even through the hurdles like yeah, you exactly. can smile through them like yeah. that's, that's already that's really good for sure yeah. yeah so yeah i think that those kind of people are who who inspire me the most just because you know they they didn't have really anything handed to them and they they had to to work really hard for what they have so yeah which i actually i got asked this question yesterday so i might as well relay it to you would you want to be famous um i mean with fame comes wealth right so um i think that being wealthy would be obviously nice because hopefully you know that wealth would kind of get passed down to you know kids and stuff like that so they wouldn't have to you know worry and i wouldn't have to worry i'd pay off my tuition and stuff like that but I think that a lot of the times with fame, um, people work so hard to get to that point and then they achieve it and then they get everything they want and then they don't know what else to work toward. Um, so I think that, that in a sense, like obviously fame would be nice, the money would be nice, but I think that it's always good to have goals and stuff you're working towards. And I think that once you like, say like, like Taylor Swift or something, like she has, she can tell someone that she wants this and she could get it like that right so but for someone power. like yeah, yeah power. exactly but for someone like me or for someone like you if we want you know a huge funko collection you're going to have to work to get that money right so that well it was more like 3 years of accumulating like accumulation and of course investing yeah exactly so it's like yeah i think that there's aspects of fame that like for sure I would love but there's also aspects that I'm like you know I'm happy with my life so for sure no I think that's a solid answer because um when I got asked that question it was kind of like what you were saying but then I realized there's a lot of repercussions that come with the fame such as you lose your private life yes also that that's the big (laughs) one like you go you go to the streets you just want to go to McDonald's and buy a happy meal and then someone just goes up to you oh my god like can can we get a selfie and like it's it's, it can get to the point where like i just want to live my life but then i have these fans just constantly come after not that the fans are bad people like they're they're supporters in the end but it's just like you can't really achieve it's like you said because you get everything you have money power you have like the most important thing of of course is like happiness because you said once you have everything you don't know what else to get so Mm -hmm it's very easy from that you you lose your happiness and i i think that's like the most important thing above all like of course you have your family friends and all that but in the end they all like they're all under the the happiness umbrella so it's like which i guess is important especially um the bigger question is like are you enjoying what you're doing like you're 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 clearly a show it's like you're not taking it super seriously yeah but at least you're enjoying it when you do because I mean, we we kind of talked about this in the cars. Like, you, it loses integrity mm-hmm. when you when you treat it as just like a nine to five job. Yeah, it's obviously like it pays the bills for some people, but I think that if you have the goal of like I'm gonna make this to get views, then even if it's really good, because I've made stuff that I'm like, oh, like I'm so happy with this. I'm so happy. like I think that this could actually hit the algorithm and like do well and then i post it and it gets like you know not very much traction and i'm like oh that sucks but then like you know people will remind me like no like this is really good and you didn't you didn't make it because you know you were trying to you know break the algorithm you made it because you liked it right absolutely i mean i've yeah (laughs) seven years of doing youtube like you tend you tend to have to learn these kind of things Mm -hmm. And it's also with with traction, you just got to accept it. Like, for all I know, this episode could go extremely viral or it can just get like 15 views. But ultimately, it is like the product in the end and 
what we're happy with. Like my highest viewed video was a video I didn't even expect to get that many views. It's a one of my reviews on a Godzilla action figure. It has almost half a million views, and that was one of the last videos I was expecting. And that's it sometimes, right? Yeah, that's it. Sometimes it's just an accident. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, like I said, my whole channel started. Yeah, exactly. So I was like, um, with the algorithm and the stats that you get out of it, it's just, it comes to you. You can't really expect it. It just, suddenly it's here. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about your, like your brother's viral video for a second. Yeah. Like how, (laughs) how did that happen? (laughs) Um, Six and a half million views, right? So, you know, because we, um, me and Ryan were both in a, a class called How to Be a Social Media Star. Mm-hmm. Um, ne- I don't think neither of us became a social media star. But <laughs> I think we, we kind of just stayed the same. Yeah. After. <laughs> but um, like your brother, on the other hand. Yeah, but um, we are supposed to make content every week, I think. Every week we were supposed to post. It was, no, it was like a forum assignment, I think. Okay, I can't remember. It was a while ago, but <laughs> but oh yeah, we, no, we, we had were to do, we, had we to do five, we yeah, had to do five different ones. Anyway. We were supposed to make content for it, um, and my brother started making Instagram reels, um, and he would just you know be scrolling, and then he would see a video, and then he would just like do a, I think it's like a remix or something on Instagram. So is it like TikTok where it's like it's you, like a you stitch, re- yeah, yeah, a stitch, yeah, yeah, you just react to it um, or something like that. So he would just do that. Um, and then a couple of them got like like 10k like you know decent decent amount of views and then just one <laughs> he i think the video was is like a guy was getting attacked by a duck and then he like picked <laughs> he picked up his kid and then like started swinging the kid at the duck and then my brother it just cut to him and he was like oh i didn't know you could use them that way or something like that and then it it blew up like got six million views like hundreds of thousands of likes he gained like like 2500 followers Whoa. so yeah he <laughs> if you ask him about it he hates talking about it because i feel like that would be something we would be proud of i know about. he he like he's proud of it but I, he like i don't know he just he's not like a he's a pretty humble guy so that's, that's and when you bring up his success he's kind of like oh yeah that's video. good. Ego doesn't get him. That's yeah, good. but he um, he kind of stopped doing that content, and he's trying to figure out what what he wants to keep doing. So he's just trying to find his his niche, I guess. So that's good. So it's yeah. more like he just did it for fun, and then yeah, it just I mean, blew up. he was doing it for for the class, right? So and it just accidentally blew up. Exactly. I've I've over the summer last year summer. Um, I was doing this TikTok series on a Funko set. It was from Spider-Man No Way Home. It was the Statue of Liberty. I still had the three Spider-Man and the five villains. I just randomly did one of the videos as a fun little TikTok, and it was similar to your brother. It got quite a bit of traction. Not six million views yeah. that big, but it got to the point where I got comments littering on every TikTok I posted after, asking for the next part. Like, when's the next piece coming out? When is it? It was like, mm-hmm. I don't even have it yet. Relax, yeah. everyone. <laughs> So, I, from there I learned, oh, like, I can actually, I have something here. Mm-hmm. I have something I can work with. And so, Funko likes to take their sweet time putting out different pieces for the sets. Mm-hmm. So, that first piece I did was the Tom Holland Spider-Man piece. And then after, I followed up with the Lizard piece. And then now people were like, okay, this guy, this, oh, yo, this set is so cool. I want to see this guy build, mm-hmm. build the set and complete it. And I think by the time I got to the middle everyone was just craving for the next part i don't know what is the the main drive but i just have people who were constantly bugging me for it so eventually i did more teaser videos i was like okay i see the store is going to get the new piece soon so i post a little clip saying guys i'm gonna get it soon and then i i from what i've noticed it builds excitement Mm -hmm. in the comments eventually i finished the set obviously the last piece came out in august last year so i po- i finished that and i think the highest view tiktok i got from that whole series was 1.4 million and that's it really was good. when i got the toby Maguire spider-man piece yeah that's really good yeah so it was similar to your brother except he just got through one video mm-hmm. i had like a series of videos but i would say definitely your brother had the better of it because he got way more views out of it so. yeah and then i i think that he had a couple that got over 100k after that but 
he never got close to to the six mil. No, once you hit the peak, like it, yeah. it's hard to maintain it. Exactly. Like it just yeah. it, it will dip. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Like now, um, <laughs> yeah, my TikTok's dead now <laughs> since, <laughs> since since that series. So, any like techniques, any like tips you've learned as you? Because I saw from your videos, there is some like pretty cool like shots and stuff. Like, um, did you learn self taught? Someone teach you all that? Um, yeah, like being around other people that are better at it than I am, you kind of pick up a thing or two. Um, but also just, I think that if you, if you're wanting to get good at something, like watch people that are good at it and then you'll... Any examples? Like, for example, like if you wanted to be a sports videographer for the NBA, like there's one, there's one guy that I follow. I, I don't know how to pronounce his, his, um, at but it's like j-n-g-l-e-r-t i think um and he his videos are just like they just look so nice and like his shots are super nice so it's like yeah i i, I kind of want wanted my videos to look like that so i would go out and i would shoot so you practice your cinematography based on that if there's an like a edit that i see that i want to do that i think is cool then i'll keep that in my head and then i'll take a couple shots of the player that i want to do it with and then I'll, you know, do that edit later. So I can definitely think of a few examples right now, but I don't know if I want to give them a shout out. <laughs> yeah, I think, sorry. I think there's also like, like a, a fine line between taking inspiration and, and, and straight up copying. Yeah. So I think that you can take inspiration, but you should also have that part of like uniqueness or like something that makes it you. So. Yeah. Well, usually the whole topic of copyright is just a gray area in general. Like, I mean, we had a whole class about it in the mm-hmm. social media star course. Like, inspiration is fantastic because then everyone, it's good. It, you, if you're in the position where you are the inspiration, it mm-hmm. does, like, it's like a great feeling. But, like, so my, my question for, to that, like, as we're transitioning is, like, has anyone like around campus just walked up to you and be like, that was a great video or how'd you do that? Or like, yeah. Oh, your video went here. They saw your video by the way. Or like, that. yeah. Um, with, with, so YouTube wise, um, there's lots of people that will be like, Oh, I saw your, your Jeff Gibbons video. Like it was so funny. It was so good. Um, and then like my, my other, like my Instagram for videography, like the athletes that I like will make videos for will like, I'll run into them and they'll be like, dude, like that was sick. Like I really appreciate you and stuff like that. And then like people that I just meet for the first time, will be like, Oh, I've I've seen your videos on like, they're so good. And I'm, it's just like, I don't know. It's nice to like hear that, but (laughs) sometimes I don't know how to respond to like people complimenting me because it's like, I don't know. At least you're humble. You're like a brother. I'm not, I'm not a kind of person that's like, I don't really like to be the center of attention at all. So I like kind of keeping it to myself, but yeah. So I just, I'm very thankful whenever someone says that my work is good. Cause I mean, that's not, I don't do it for other people. I do it for myself, but if other people like tell me that it's good, then I don't know, it kind of makes my day. So, that's good. so, this this will take a little bit of a dark turn. Have you gotten any like negative feedback or uh, let's just say hate about it? Um, hate. Um, I've had my fair share. So, <laughs> not. I haven't got any hate on anything like on my sports videography side because I don't know. I feel like there's less to hate on because it's it's not like really me that's in it. It's like other people, but. And I haven't actually, surprisingly, I haven't gotten any, like, hate comments on my YouTube except for the first High School Musical video I did. Um, but that was the one that got, like, it, I think it's at... It's the comments still it's up? It's at 996,000 views right now. Um, and, like, probably 90% of the comments are positive. That's good. Um, but then, like, even the other day, someone was like, this is, this is horrible, this is not funny. And it's like... <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks for leaving that comment. Yeah, it's like, it's like there's I mean, thousands of people that disagree with you. But that's I'm, exactly I'm glad like, that you put that comment there. 
Like, you're entitled to your own opinion, but I don't have to agree with your opinion. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Something I started doing with that video, because lots of people would comment, if someone had, like, a a comment that was, like, a hate comment, or, like, them being, like, oh, this you, this is unoriginal, like, try, you, you copy this, blah, 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 I would, like, I'd pin it, I'd pin the comment. Wow, putting them on the spot. Yeah. You're that petty, huh? And then everyone would be, like just like disagreeing with them and like just like <laughs> wow you are that petty yeah so it's kind of like i didn't have to say anything but then just, just let him cook <laughs> i would pin a hate comment like there's like r- early on when i posted it someone was like wow nice try buddy this isn't zach efron's real vocals and then and and i never claimed it sometimes to be. It's, sometimes it's so these people they just want validation yeah that's, it's, that's about it's it. so obviously not zach efron so i like pinned it and then like so many comments were like wow really really we couldn't tell so i think that there's some some value in in the pin of shame you know getting everyone to see how how dumb they are but yeah. is it still pinned i uh, no, i changed it because um because i put out another video so i wanted people to to go on and see and then I was oh like, okay oh, new video link mm-hmm. here so but yeah it it uh it was pinned for a while, and then like I would change it if uh, if a new hate comment would come in. But yeah, that's fair. I mean, I used to like because they they removed the dislike counter now, mm-hmm. but when you open YouTube Studio, you can still see it. Yeah. And then sometimes I open a video, I see the percentage like twenty three percent. I'm like, what? <laughs> the video was great. Yeah. <laughs> like, why why would you dislike it? But it's like I've I've grown like I've learned that it's like there's just people mm-hmm. out there. You just roll of it move on sometimes it's your friends too just trolling you yeah exactly that too that's a big thing exactly. i had a friend for a while that he would dislike every single one of my videos and i was like can you just stop this is, it messes with my analytics stop disliking my videos yeah. oh yeah that no yeah, yeah, i think i think they've adjusted but either way it's it's still annoying it can get annoying um when it when it comes to like when it comes to hate especially i feel like if let's say you or me we've reached that a level celebrity mm-hmm. success you're going to have to prepare for not everyone's going to support you so you're going to have to prepare for those people who will be very opposed against you like i i can only imagine taylor swift has yeah. just as many haters as she has fans yeah, sure. so it's like a lot of people who do that kind of stuff like for example like people who okay like it may be an actual like valid criticism like okay this this video wasn't that great mm-hmm. i didn't like it like it's just genuine, it's not straight, not straight animosity. Like, I don't like you, so screw your video. <laughs> so yeah. it's like, it, you you gotta, it's just you gotta learn how to filter out those kind of things. Like, you gotta tell who is actually being reasonable and who is just spiting. Mm-hmm. That's a big one. Um, he also started a YouTube channel. He's uh, doing. Uh, Shadowverse cards, TC, like it's like a TCG unboxing. For now, yeah, it's basic. I'm just gonna mostly like card game related stuff. At least that's the plan. So I'm like the I I would say I'm like the veteran here. Like, yes. what kind of advice yeah. would you give him? He is like the newbie. Technically, um, I mean, it depends like what your goal is. But I think that if you're just trying to have a good time, then I would say just just keep doing it if you're like just obviously you're passionate about what you're going to be posting about so i just think that if you keep that passion and never forget and if if you do lose like like the love for it then i think you just have to go back and ask yourself why you started doing it in the first place Mm -hmm. and then if you're always able to find that like oh i'm doing this because you know i i like you know, making a video on this, I like sh- the shooting aspect, I like editing it, like, I enjoy all of that, then, like, it doesn't matter if you get five views or 10,000 views, like, I just say, just keep having fun. On the topic of views, how how, how are your videos doing? Uh, there, I have two videos out right now, I just started, they both have about 50 views each. So, so. That's a good start. It's a good first start, but... Sub count, yeah. you're at what? Eight. <laughs> It's kind of sad. It's okay. Some counts a bit this, low. This podcast channel is at twenty six. So, <laughs> but yeah. hey, plug the channel, bro. Plug the channel. Well, editor, put the channel name yeah. in here. Okay. But to be fair, the podcast channel actually has less views than my video for some reason. Well, well, it's because our... it's probably like two hours long. Two but... hours long. Yeah, that's very. 
There's, there's not. I've surpassed your the podcast channel and view average. Just dissing the podcast channel. Yeah, yeah. Come on. I, I wonder how many views this episode will get. <laughs> As I, now I'm curious now. But on Spotify, we got credit. Spotify, we've been doing pretty good, actually. That's awesome. Like, our highest viewed... Um, or sorry, highest streamed episode was when we reacted to the first two MonsterVerse movies. But then on YouTube, um, our highest viewed episode is the one we just put out, where we tried the new Mr. Beast chocolate. So, I guess it's different. Every every platform is different audience. Yeah. I mean, that kind of, I guess that would kind of make sense, because, like... If you're watching someone try something, you'd probably want to watch them rather than listen yeah, to it. Listen. And then, like, if you're, you know, the other other one that you mentioned, like, maybe people would enjoy listening to that a little bit more than watching it. I feel like this episode would definitely be one you can just listen to. You don't necessarily watch yeah. it. Hopefully there's some good nuggets of wisdom in there. Yeah. Well, I can def. I like, as you were talking, I was already picturing what parts I can use as clips. Oh, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, on the topic of, like, different different platforms obviously like your brother has blown up through instagram um does he do youtube uh yeah he has a youtube channel he has his old one that he would post smash stuff on okay, um so yeah, and so then he has he, he has another one that he i think he has like three videos on well my my question is like just like with, with our podcast channel situation like the stats are i assume are different on each platform yeah. so it's like i guess it, like each platform has their own audiences, and you, I think you have to learn how to cater to them. So I guess with what your brother did, he just did a simple stitch reaction to a clip, clean and simple. What thirty seconds? Probably. Like yeah, short and sweet. Maybe even like fifteen. And mo- yeah, most most of the social media cons- consumption these days is just quick. Yeah, just exactly. Quick cons- like I see this, move on, scroll and scroll, scroll, just mm-hmm. bunch of scrolling. And I guess that's a big reason why shorts is such like short form video, is such a dominant form. I've, do you feel like these are kind of the things that you think you should adapt if like with your current work? You think you should adapt to doing these kind of things? Stick to what's trending, uh, and all that. I think so. For YouTube, I feel like like I've posted, mm, I've posted five shorts. Um, like edited shorts yeah um and the most views one got the highest view is 700 so like not not big at all but like i think that that for youtube i don't i'm not making stuff to like cater to the algorithm i'm making like you know i'm not gonna make a song and like post a bunch of shorts to promote it like i'm just gonna put the song onto youtube that's something a lot of artists now yeah are doing. i'm just gonna put my song on to youtube and then just there it is if people want to watch it they can watch it if not that's fine um but like for my instagram that's not related to my youtube i think that that i try and play into trends a little bit um just because you know you're not it's kind of hard to make a following unless you get something that kind of reaches a huge wide audience because like a video that I make that gets, you know, 24,000 views might get me three followers, right? Absolutely. So, yeah. <laughs> so views it, do not reflect your exactly. fan base. Um, so if I want to keep growing, like it would be nice to have, you know, one video that gets like, you know, a million or 10 million or something because maybe that'll get me like 100 followers, right? Yeah, if you if you if you can establish a fan base of people who are loyal to your content, mm-hmm. I think that's that's I think that's more um, efficient because like let, let's say you like you have like KSI success like he has like such a broad audience and it's not and he started from YouTube but I, what I appreciate about what he does is he keeps it humble like rooted he, he keeps it centered in the end and he does that through. He still is consistent with making YouTube videos because that is where he started and that is where his like first fans came from. So he's kind of doing that instead of because he obviously he has a whole mainstream side. Mm-hmm. So I think he, understanding and respecting your roots is good. And I think like for you you and like your case and my case, like as long as we have this group of people that come to watch our content mm-hmm. because they like the content. Not just because we're like some big, big, yeah. big shot, big name. Like, I think that is more uh, meaningful than just. Yeah, I mean, it's like, would you rather 
five close friends or you know 25 exactly like i feel like numbers i think numbers doesn't reflect quality yeah for sure like uh, like do, do you remember um chris whitford yes yeah, yeah really so lovely. his his channel is is he had a couple videos that that did really well um and he's gained a ton of subscribers um, is he is he doing it full time yeah he's trying to um and his videos are like they're like like an hour long like video essays and stuff like that that he's like done t- tons of research like really planned out scripts like nice 4k quality like nice set um, so it's like a documentary almost yeah almost um and then some of his videos get like 90 views and then it's like oh that's too bad because i know how much work went into that video but then you know finally he he's found his niche and he's i think one video has a over a hundred thousand and like and then his next video got like fifty thousand. so like it's kind of he's kind of been going like this so it's nice to see because he's definitely been through that time where the quality of the video didn't reflect how many is he monetized he is monetized now yeah there you go you can gain something back out of it yeah yeah for sure so yeah i think it's his channel's name is witty guy so there you go go subscribe to witty guy subscribe to witty guy you're welcome yeah Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) like as you said with fame comes wealth Mm -hmm. and like yeah i feel like this it is great if you can get lots of views with all of your videos and have a big fan base because then you can rely on the monetary value of it i mean for my channel i am in the youtube partner program but i i I can reveal this information realistically speaking if i relied on my channel as my main source of income i ain't gonna survive (laughs) (laughs) like the most i have made four and a half thousand dollars over the seven years over the seven years well i i wasn't monetized till 2020 okay so over the last four years yeah and the most i've gained was four thousand like around four thousand and then there's like the u.s taxes mm-hmm. and all that it's it's a it's a head scratcher um, was it total or is that in like a single from video? one single video single video okay okay so okay, like though. yeah and uh, as of now i'm st- like i'm still like I'm, I'm still earning but it's like i get paid once every two months now it used okay. to be it, it's a monthly payment they distribute funds to all creators um I think near the end, like the t- between the twentieth and the thirtieth of the month. So, this might be personal, but is your your channel is not monetized, right? It is. Oh, it is. Okay. So, would you be willing to share how what was the yes. most you made? <laughs> um, the most I've made in a month. So I'm I'm getting paid every month by YouTube. It's okay. Really okay, nice. that's good. It's really nice because especially being a student. Um, it helps money goes quickly um but i think the most i made in a month was 245 dollars a month okay no, that's good uh, if it's monthly that's that's like yeah yeah that's and good the lowest i've made in a month is i think 140 so i'm kind of yeah, ranging in that area but it's it's not much but obviously i'm super blessed to even be able to have a little passive income coming in yeah that's that's like the big thing yeah have you ever been hit by uh, channel strikes no uh youtube wouldn't let me monetize for a bit um, exactly that's that's one but i i had to submit like an appeal video and they they accepted it within like a day so like right now i'm working on for my videography side i'm working on a a, a docuseries from a, a basketball tournament that i was Ooh. at um tell us more <laughs> yeah so i was at um it's called islands it's a it's a basketball tournament on the island for for like the best teams on the island and then the top three teams get to go to provincials which is here sorry didn't mean to dox you can <laughs> we'll bleep it it's fine, it's fine. we'll bleep yeah, that up so um, my dad's the coach of my old basketball team so i went with them and just documented everything and they ended up doing really well they qualified so um but where I was getting at was um, that channel is not monetized um, and only has like 40 subscribers. Um, so I, I'm going to use like some copyrighted music. I don't really care. I feel like when you when you have a, demo, a non-monetized yeah. channel, you have, you, you have more freedom. Exactly. And even if I did eventually get monetized, I would just turn, I would just turn the monetization off 
on yeah. those videos because it's like yeah but you haven't been hit with like a copyright strike or no strikes i have a couple of videos that are copyrighted um sometimes the beats that i use for my songs uh, yeah that's a big one when it comes to music things so, get tricky yeah sometimes the beat makers will copyright the beats but i'm not even if you purchase the beat yeah, I haven't, I haven't actually purchased any of the beats that I use. I just turn monetization off on those videos because if, if I was mo like monetized on someone else's beat, then that's that's not really good. If you used um, like Sonic music or, or something from um, Rise of the Aethers, would that be copyrighted? I have no idea. Because okay. <laughs> like, I feel like video game music is more... If it's Nintendo, Nintendo yeah, yeah. doesn't like it. <laughs> yeah, if it's Nintendo. <laughs> you gotta be careful with Nintendo. There was two instances in my whole YouTube career where I got two channel strikes all at separate times. Okay. So I wasn't on the verge of losing the channel. Um, the first time, I don't remember what happened anymore, but the second time was from a private stream. So I was quite taken aback by that. I was like, this isn't even public. Why did I get a strike for this? But it, during that, this was during COVID when, of course, we were all staying indoors. I did a lot of streaming, and I just it was just me playing Fortnite, Apex, Overwatch, like just with my friends. There was one certain part in one of the streams where um, my friend was saying something very offensive, <laughs> a bit too offensive, and I guess I don't know. I guess their automatic detection system was like, "All right, now you're yes. promoting hate speech." And this was a private stream. Yeah, this was a private wow. stream. It's not even public. Huh. And then, yeah, I had to submit appeal. I had to take a like a little mini course on the policies of hate speech and all wow. that. It was a it was a head scratcher, wow. and finally, after when I finished that course, then I I could submit the appeal. And two days ago, the strike finally lifted. Wow! Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. So it's gotten to the point where you need to be mindful of what mm -hmm. you post. Like yeah. even if it's not meant for the public eye, like YouTube can come after you yeah, <laughs> pretty sure. harshly. Yeah. So I feel like, like that's why I was like, have you experienced anything like that? But I guess luckily you didn't. So no, and I don't think I've really, at least I'm I'm pretty like I don't know. I feel like I'm pretty unproblematic. I like to follow the rules. So if YouTube says I can't do something, then I probably won't do it. No, yeah, you probably like you'll you're just like you won't go against it, yeah. right? and you just won't yeah. rebel. Like that's fair. That's something you need to keep in mind <laughs> as you're yeah. as you're growing your YouTube, and especially like like with the the beats that I use for songs it's like I know that the producer put in a lot of time and effort into that beat so I wouldn't just want to profit off of it without I mean do you put his credits in the I description do. I do I put produced by um but I don't buy the beat and I don't monetize my video it's just like solely for So it's there's no tag on it we're just some random dude saying something in the background of the beat Yeah there's there's like a little producer tag at the beginning and that's it Oh okay Yeah Okay. Yeah. So it doesn't like if if the like if I'm going through like trying to find a beat and there's like a wild producer tag, I won't use it. Oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, if it's just like a pretty like low key one, then. I mean, I've I've actually have purchased a beat before. Um, apart from after paying, you actually get this whole PDF attachment of just a bunch of legal documents, yeah. like what to do and stuff. I've bought like sample packs before. And like I've had to like look through those. Yeah, it's like so you you can do this, but you can't, you can't do, do this. That. And this. Yeah. when you post it, you gotta include the yeah. this in the credits. Yeah. Don't include that. It's like there's a lot of stuffs that happen. Exactly. So I think the that's why it, you gotta be careful with the content you're doing. I guess that's why sometimes I wonder how do reaction channels like really like thrive if yeah. I mean, their main source of content is them reacting to something that's not theirs. Yeah, if they're reacting to like. I, I think they just make it off of like like non copyrighted stuff like just yeah, like TikTok clips or like YouTube clips and stuff right I would assume I would assume so like I mean we're trying it now we're reacting to the MonsterVerse movies and luckily it's going on this channel which is not monetized so I'm on I, I don't know what it's like yet Less worried. yeah so all right so original content that's why I was I always say original content is good because even in gaming content a little bit of the soundtrack plays in the background, copyright. Yeah. Especially with Battlefront, because a lot of the Star Wars soundtracks are heavily copyrighted, and they use it in the game. So it's like, it's a lose lose. Yeah. So, I guess for your case, when you're doing cards, 
Do you put music? There is no music for now. So it's just your pure narration. Uh, for now, yeah. I'm planning to maybe add some music in the future, like background music. So I'll... There's lots of no copyright music. So I'm saying, yeah, do, do you have like a royalty-free thing um, where you just scroll through the library from you? So for the documentary, I've just been, or the docuseries, I've just been looking up like on YouTube, like this, this type song for documentary, no copyright. And then... I actually found out that it's not super efficient. Sometimes yeah, you find know. the top result with like millions of views saying, oh, everyone's yeah. using it, I'll use it. Nope, it'll also hit you with the demonetization. Yeah, I've, in the past, I've looked for like no copyright stuff and then I'll get copyrighted for it. And I'm like, what the? <laughs> but since it's going on the other channel, I don't really care. Um, but I've also, there's one, um, there's one rapper that I've been using some of his stuff. His name's Connor Price. Um, Does he do like NCS? Hmm? Uh, NCS, like no copyright no, he's, sound. He's like an actual rapper. But, oh, um, okay. But he, I remember him saying somewhere that he doesn't copyright his music. Um, so he just, he's okay with everyone yeah. using it. And I can't remember where I saw him say that, but I was like, oh, that's sick. So I've, I've been using some of his stuff. It's kind of like Mr. Beast openly saying on Twitter, he's like, everyone who wants to make reaction videos to me, go of my videos, go for it. Mm -hmm. Like, you won't, there will be no consequences. Just, just go for it. Because I guess it helps... If you have I mean, people, it's free exactly, you have people reacting your, to your content. It, it's it just gains, it gives you more exposure. And it's not like I'm straight up stealing his song and just posting it as my own. It's like I'm using it in something that people are gonna see, and then they're gonna be like, "Oh, what was that song?" Exactly. And yeah, yeah. You Shazam it or something, and then <laughs> and then you listen to it. Right? I mean, the the Zelda cover you did, like the lyrics were rewritten. Yeah, no, the but the beat's still the same. The beat, the beat was the Ocarina of Time beat or whatever, like the. Whatever. I, it, it's, I, Lost yeah. Woods? I, I, I don't know what it's called. But, yeah. but um, yeah, it was, it was from a producer that I've used his beats before. And Did you I, get... Is it demonetized, I assume? Uh, no. Oh, yeah, it, it's demonetized. But, it, it but didn't, you got no like strikes or anything? No like strikes. That. Okay, that's good. Yeah, so no, it didn't even get copyrighted. It's not... Is it... It's from the game? Yeah, so here, I'll just play a little bit of it. So it's just like the producer sampled like this thing from Zelda. And then he just like made a beat around it, and then me and my friend just came up with as many like Zelda puns as we could. Actually, um, that was the video I showed them when they they, oh, yeah. they wanted to know about your work. I was like, all right, here, you just posted that. Let me show them it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there there wasn't anything with that. I thought there would be just because it's Nintendo, um, but there wasn't. So. Okay, because I thought yeah, I thought Nintendo was usually strict when yeah. it comes to these kind of music. Maybe yeah. it's not big enough. Maybe, Maybe. yeah. It's it's but the game really, is yeah. really old. Two minutes, so. twelve seconds. How old? Like two thousand two old. Nineties. Nineties. Oh, is that old? Okay. Don't know. Does does their copyright go back that far? Yeah, or could yeah, they? I, don't know. I feel like it would. I mean, YouTube wasn't really established by that time. No, but I feel like Nintendo would like renew some stuff. On they don't care. They just go after you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If yeah. Nintendo comes after me, then I'll have to take it down. But <laughs> for yeah. now, you're good. For now, you're good. Yeah. It's, it, it, That's actually my just like worst. Down, down, down will the MP4 file. Yeah, just exactly. in case. <laughs> now this is like my worst performing song that I've ever put out. So, which is too bad because I thought it was kind of funny. But well, what did you think of the song when I played it to you guys? <laughs> yeah. Your honest reactions. He's right here. <laughs> I have short-term memory, so I already forgot. Well, how about this then? Now we'll, we'll play it yeah. one more time. Um, but if this section gets copyrighted, I'll just mute it. I'll just get my editor and mute it. All right, your first piece of work. We also didn't freestyle it. I just did you film it. this on campus? No, this is at my house. Oh. I assume that's the producer. Yeah. Yeah. Don't matter, young tuna shadow, I'll cook them with them all. My rhyme game flow like this 
soul river. Be going fast, making gain and quiver. Hanging from the track like Goku. Twilight Princess might spook you. Look, just don't get the chicken. Like my words, I swear they hidden. Not as hard as the bomb from Boblin. He said that bridge crumbling. Is that your voice? Hmm? No, it's the, the character. Yeah. Solving shrines, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Course, my dogs, they give me seeds. Calamity again, don't talk to me, please. Throwing shade with the master sword. First, I need my controller cord. Turn on my switch, which is the kingdom. I got me hitched. Do you take Zelda as your lovely wedded wife? Yeah! I wonder what the neighbors think. <laughs> <laughs> So what do you guys think? <laughs> it's pretty good. Uh, it's actually, I think it's good. Um, might be my angle, but it looks a bit dark. Yeah, it is. It was pretty dark when we recorded it. So it was in the middle of the night, I assume. Yeah. Also, my brightness wasn't all the way up, but it was dark. Yeah, for sure. Any thoughts, Santos? Nice puns. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Um. Yeah, well, no, it's, it's, did you produce this with one camera? Just like, just one camera, one yeah. camera, show you guys just goofing we, around. So we, our, our method usually when we, when we record is we, I'll, I'll like come up with the initial idea and then I'll like, I'll text my friend and I'll be like, bro, I got some, I got an idea. <laughs> and then, and then he'll be like, sick, I'll write something. He'll come over, we'll record it. I won't even finish like mixing the song and then we'll just go out. Or record a music video in like 10 minutes i mean um when we shot our music video for one of our songs i played the draft version of the song yeah that's that's yet. yeah so i i won't even have it all done yet but we'll have like the the good skeleton of it and then I'll, we'll record the music video and then i'll finish the finishing touches on the song and then i'll edit it together so the all of that we did in like an hour and a half what's so. what's the reception on it uh, how's how's people reacting? Yeah, to it? so it has it has um, 106 views, <laughs> which is probably 10 out of 10 on my yeah. That's my definitely analytics. 10 out of 10, unfortunately. Um, but there's there's four comments. I think one of them might be mine. Yeah, one of them's yours. <laughs> um, two of them are my other friends, and then one's a random person that liked my High School Musical video. So very nice. How many likes? 12 likes. Okay. Yeah. But I've, uh, my last four videos are songs, and th that one had 106. The one before has 715. The one before has 631, and the one before has 541. So what's your quite the drop off? What's your highest viewed video? What's it? Yeah, it's the the High School Musical. So is it the one at uh, 960k? No, that one. Okay. Well, almost you almost got a million there. Yeah. My channel's at over a million. All right, guys, right. let's get that video to a million. Yeah. Go watch the video right now. <laughs> Um, but I have, I have five videos that have hit over a thousand views, two that have hit over a hundred thousand. So one that's getting there. That's pretty solid. Yeah. Um, do you think you, <laughs> this is a random question. I just thought of it. You think you want, you would string all, string all your pieces together, like all your songs together to make a little album? Um, there's like, there's definitely songs that I've made that I'm like, oh, like, there's kind of a theme here, and that I would, like, thought about putting, like, an album on SoundCloud, but I don't know. I don't, I don't, I feel like I don't do it enough or do it, like, seriously enough to actually want to work on an album, but it's kind of just, like, one-off, like, funny yeah, little, yeah, yeah, little songs. So. I mean, we have a couple one-off funny songs, too. Yeah. There's one that I sing on it, and that will never see the light of day. <laughs> but you, you guys have heard it, so... Um, so it, it so it clearly it shows that you know you have put some producing you have some cinematography in it was there any other videos where it's just grounded where it's just like you sitting there 
or you know standing in one spot doing something um like, I guess this is a great time for you to start showing us some of your stuff. Like, yeah, I'm kind of, um, I'm kind of setting up the section. <laughs> like, you mean like super? Yeah, like shows, show us what you want the people to see. <laughs> I mean, I think this one is like my least effort. So this one, we don't have to watch the full thing, but um, I was visiting my family and and my cousins, like. He's he's a rapper, like he takes it pretty seriously. He's a really good producer and stuff like that. And um I was like, Oh, we should just like make a make a song and like try and make a song in an hour or whatever. And then we just like From scratch? <laughs> uh we found a beat, but everything else was from scratch. Okay. Um and then we just started recording on my phone, just like one take. That's pretty good for quality for a phone. Yeah, so just one take and we were just kinda of throwing the, the phone around to each other. So it's like, it's really low, low quality, but it's kind of funny. <laughs> and we didn't even have a mic, so I just used like, we recorded on my MacBook mic. <laughs> so this is just you having a good time. Yeah, we were just having fun. <laughs> so this is, in the video, you are, you're just mouth syncing? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You can like hear him oh, talking. I can hear, you yeah. can hear the actual audio. Okay. Yeah. You can take that out. <laughs> so I don't know. I feel like it's good to like just throw those in every now and then because if I was to get in like a bigger audience, they would kind of see our like more goofy, silly side. I mean, and it's more like tell, <laughs> tell me about. It. Yeah, we have a more like, we have a Fortnite song. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I would love to hear that. Uh, maybe maybe at the end, like let's show let's look at your stuff first, and in the end, I'll show you some um, of our stuff. <laughs> I'll show you a little, a little. Yeah, I'll I'll show you a bit of the, the microwave song. Oh yeah, yeah. You talked about it. Yeah. Just might as well see it. What's this guy got ads on his videos? Come on. Let me skip that. Yeah, you just made yourself another buck. <laughs> so this one, this is the our first song. It's not very well produced, because my friend like, he he knows more now, but is like, pretty early in his producing career. Lots of slow mo. Yeah. Hey, the lens flare already adds to it. <laughs> yeah. With the sun in the back. Very cinematic. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's enough of that one. But it's like pretty early on. You can't. The vocals aren't very well. Uh, you can clearly hear the auto tune. Yeah. Um, you can't really hear us too well. So it's like. What do you think, Santos? Cinematography is better than what I can do. <laughs> yeah, that was on my brother. He he killed it with that one. So. The like. Uh, the common trick is like you want something to look cinematic lens flare yeah <laughs> slow-mo lens, Slow -mo lens flare there yeah you go. and what what he did was like a little a little industry trick he like he slowed down the song um, oh yeah yeah i've seen people do it or they speed it up yeah he's, so, so he, he slowed down the song or no no he sorry he sped up the song by 50 percent um so when we recorded it we were like lip syncing to the sped up song and then so he would when he went to edit it, he put the clips at 50% slow. And it looks so our, like our mouths still moment. match up, yeah. but it's just like kind of like a flowy, like kind of like dreamy kind of vibe. That is a very neat trick. Yeah. yeah. So it was, and that like, I'll never take that video down, even though it's not very good. Just, <laughs> just because the memories and like, I don't know, it's just. The sentiment is important. Yeah. yeah. And it ended up getting 2000 views. That's so good. 28 comments, 72 likes. So.
Yeah. What do you think of that song, Randon? I don't know. It makes me want to buy a microwave. <laughs> <laughs> That's a microwave ad right there. Yeah. Go buy a microwave. Should have been sponsored by a microwave company. Yeah. Should have hit him up. Samsung thing. Yeah. Like, hey, yo, we like that video. We can... <laughs> <laughs> Another fun thing about it was um, my buddy, the one that was playing the bass guitar, um, he bought a microwave off of like Facebook Marketplace. For, like, so there was a budget set for this video. Yeah. Uh, I think we we spent like oh, and there's something else we bought too, but I'll get to that. Um, but he bought their microwave, and then he like completely hollowed it out, and then like put a helmet inside and like oh, yeah, drilled it. So yeah. so we put it on one of our friend's heads, and he like danced around as the microwave. Um, but we also bought a can of beans because. We we had another microwave that like no one used anymore, um, and we were, we thought like oh we could like blow this microwave up, um, or like blow up. This sounds like a Mr. Beast. Video. Yeah, so we were like we bought a can of beans and like put it in the microwave for a really long time, and we thought that like the can would blow up, but it it never did. So we just wasted money. Was it was it plugged in? Yeah, it was plugged in. We we had it going for like five minutes and nothing happened. I sure the can of beans is metal with those. I thought so. <laughs> I thought that something would happen, but nothing happened. So we just, yeah, wasted whatever five bucks on a can of beans. Well, I think a firework might do the trick. You should have started probably with should firework. Have bought a firework. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but we we're trying to be low key with it. So, yeah. um, why don't we take a look at your highest viewed video? Yeah. And we see why it's your highest viewed video. Why has it gained so much attention? So this one, I'll give a little bit of context before we watch it. Ads, come on. Um, so I was in a digital recording class last spring. The final project I mentioned earlier, it was to do some folly work, take out sounds, put new ones in, or like some people had short films for other classes, so they like did the sound effects for their short films and stuff. Um, over the Christmas break, my girlfriend and I watched all the High School Musical movies because I'd never seen them before. How how many are there? There's three, plus like oh, there's yeah, like that's yeah there's and and there's one spinoff, but we didn't watch the the spinoff. But um, yeah, and then I was like, oh, that'd be funny to do for for my digital recording project. And was she was she was was she like yes, go for yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> she was. Yeah, um, and then this particular scene is like it's pretty memed upon like already just because of how like dramatic it is and you'll you'll understand so i thought it would be funny to do that and yeah it's uh it's worked out for me for sure well it would definitely worked out the reception says so otherwise yeah. <laughs> yeah i'll turn my brightness up so you can actually see it this time <laughs> and sorry the one thing about this video is i didn't spend enough time on it because this is when we were also making the jeff gibbons song oh um, and both of them I had to get done for the last class. So I put more effort into the Jeff Gibbons song and not we'll this. Watch that one after. Yeah. And then so I neglected how loud the footsteps were. Um, <laughs> and everyone seems to comment that the footsteps are too loud. And it's, yeah. So, yes, I know that the footsteps are too loud. I know that the <laughs> footsteps like, are too loud. So it's like um, Fortnite, and then you hear your the, the yeah, exactly. footsteps. <laughs> so everything else is balanced except the footsteps. So the idea is that it would you would actually you wouldn't really be able to hear him because of how far the camera was away from him. Oh, so it was intentional. Yeah, so then when he gets closer it's louder. Yeah. very anticlimactic when you think about yeah, right? it. I'm 
You think you can mimic that, Brandon? No, my voice isn't that good. <laughs> Part I exaggerated. <laughs> it reminds me of those videos I've seen is like high school musical but without the music. Mm. It's just people dancing around. Was the water sound added? Yeah, everything's added. Yeah. Nine hundred thousand people went. Yes, mm -hmm. this laughs. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. So, what you think? Beautiful voice. <laughs> <laughs> but who was actually doing it? Oh, that was you. <laughs> Everything, it was all me, yeah. Yeah. See? You think you could match it? <laughs> nah. <laughs> Can't sing. Nice footstep sounds. Yeah, they were pretty loud, weren't they? <laughs> the loud footstep sounds. And 900,000 people were like, this is amazing. Yeah. And then, so, I was hanging out with, with my brother and, and Chris the other day. And then they were talking about this guy that they saw on Instagram that, like, did the same thing. And then, like... He pretty much, like, yeah, he, like, pretty much copied exactly what I did. And, like... I guess it wasn't intentional, though. Well, maybe. I don't know if he's seen it or not. But, like, you know the the part in the water where he, like, smacks it and he goes, like, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, he, like, copied that exactly. Wow. Maybe so, he did see your video. <laughs> maybe he did. And it was, like, way after I, I posted it, too, so... No, yeah. Maybe you saw it and he's, like, I got an idea. I'm going to do the exact same thing. Yeah, I'm going to do the exact same thing. So, I mean... When people start to copy you, you know you made it. exactly. It's like I said, it's a reaction. When people are reacting to your content, you know. And like, I had I had seen um, someone do that to a different song where they were like, it was like they're in the kitchen with like pots and pans and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, no, that was yeah. a video I was ta referencing yeah, too. But like, they did it like it wasn't like super, like the sound sound effects were. It was just like the pots and pans and like some oh. shoe squeaking. <laughs> so like, it was still funny, but it just like wasn't as like meticulous as, as that and then also i wanted to add like you know my own kind of spin on it where like where you know how far he got from the camera was actually how loud his vocals were and like like if you were in around. when you were in the same yeah. room as him this is what you that was my goal and then i also like just wanted to do like a, a silly like raspy kind of stupid voice as well just to add a little extra flair to it so. Well, this was kind of your. This was the side quest, yes. I guess. And then your <laughs> your main dish was the Jeff Gibbons video, which yes, let's yeah. let's watch that right now. Yeah, so. so that one, of course, you put a lot of effort in, and it was for what again? It was for yeah. So my professor Jeff Gibbons. Um, oh, was oh that was his name? Yeah. So oh, okay. he's he's just a dope guy. We really liked him, and um, he he also is a YouTuber. He has. I think like 80,000 subscribers. That's God damn. <laughs> yeah. So shout out Jeff. Go follow Jeff too. Uh, lots of shout outs. I feel it'd be better if he gave me a shout out. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, he, he teaches. <laughs> it is. But yeah, we, me and a couple people, super talented people. I came up with the concept because I thought it was cool that like, cause music is his passion. What did he say when he saw it? Oh, he loved it. Yeah. So, but I, I think, he's kind of cool because music is his passion he teaches it and he also is a youtuber so it's like he kind of just gets to like live his dream life so my concept was like oh jeff is like someone that we want to be because like he's kind of a baller so that was like the concept of the song so and then yeah we did it as a surprise it wasn't for grades or anything so just as a fun little project just as a fun side project 
and then this was the video. I'll just pr play a little bit of it though. You don't have to watch the whole thing. We'll link all these videos, by the way, if you guys want to see it for yourselves. Oh, her. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. That's... We don't have to watch the whole thing, but... As I said, we'll link these videos in the description if you want to check it out. So, Abby was in it. Abby's... And then Chris was also in it. Chris... And then Carson. So, there's... Oh, and then um, Emma as well is also... Oh, really? Oh, Emma was in there. Yeah. So, it was it was a bunch of people and then... Greg. Should you blur all those names? <laughs> You can if you want, but they're in the video and their names are on it, so. Okay, well, that should be fine then. Um, and then Gray, who does Chapel. Well, I don't know. Yeah. But he, he's super talented as well, so. What do you yeah. think, Santos? <laughs> nice lighting. <laughs> <laughs> My video makes sense now. I think I saw it before. I was like, who, who is Jeff Gaff? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I think, like, his classes were pretty full after that, so I think he was good advertising. Hey, there you go. Honestly, we should we should do that with some of our other profs. Yeah. <laughs> do a music video dedicated to them. Yeah. Honestly, sign me. I'm, if hey, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm down to join you guys for yeah, like a shoot. For sure. <laughs> so, those are kind of my projects. That's kind of my content. Is I'll if I have a funny idea for a song, then I'll hit someone up and be like, hey, we should make this, and just I, I just like having fun. It's it's always passion of, or always a passion of mine to create. So, I like music. I like sports. So that's pretty. So you kind of strung it all together into what is now your YouTube, which is just a, just if someone just threw up a whole bunch of content onto a onto a that's, channel. That's, that's my yeah, channel. Yeah, you know, you can technically see that's like your resume. In a way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, here's all my. Here's some stuff I did. Here's the stuff I'm proud of. Yeah, and like I'm, like right now, like the reason why I did that docuseries is because i wanted it to be like a portfolio piece so like oh, yeah, yeah. there's like a bunch of stuff now that's like if i'm gonna do something i might as well like do it well you know just in case if i want to use it as a portfolio piece I'm, I'm also working on well it's not the documentary length but the production of it is like a documentary okay. and that was i did that last year it's based off the convention i went to and i went again this year so i was i'm taking this year's this year's events as like the improvement of last year's so what went well, but then what could be better, and then that's what I'm doing with this one. So definitely not what to love what you're doing, but like I'm experimenting with things. Yeah, why not, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and if you're not learning from what, like the last one, then exactly. you're not you're not progressing. I'm not saying the last one was bad. It's just like it can be better. Exactly. It's good, but it can be if, better. If you're if you are doing something, especially like you know content creation, where it seems like everyone is doing it it's more and more competitive so. well it becomes more manufactured it loses its charm mm -hmm. because you yeah. want yours and, to stand out if, if that's the thing you want yours to stand out so what are you going to do to make it stand exactly, out yeah. so if you're just putting out crappy content and being like wow it is what it is but you actually want to pursue it then it's like you're probably not going to you have to you have to learn from your mistakes right so uh, like for your case you're you're still in like the the origin stage you're just starting out and I definitely think, take it from both of us, like, <laughs> like, look at what can be improved. But also don't be too hard on yourself. Like, post your videos, and then in a few months, watch them back, and then if you're like, ooh, I don't really like that, then you can yeah. change something, or you can unlist it, or private it, so that no one can ever see it again. <laughs> Most of it's just for fun for now, yeah, so. Exactly. No, yeah, it's, it's the same reasons, yeah. Just keep having fun, and then... You know, one day your one of your videos might blow up by accident. No, the next thing you know, 
uh, Shadowverse might hit you and be like, hey, we want to make a card <laughs> for yeah, you. Exactly. And then people will be begging you to make the next video and you'll be like, I don't have time. <laughs> we'll see one day. Yeah, you never know. Like, you never know. The most unexpected things happen when you, yeah, when you least expect it. Yeah. Uh, I kind of butchered that quote, but yeah. <laughs> Nothing like that's ever happened to me, but I really hope that Zac Efron saw my video. <laughs> he might have. Maybe. Know, but. Maybe. Does he have TikTok? I think so. Right? I didn't post it on TikTok, but but yeah. I but like the know. you know a big name I've seen it if they if they post like a reaction video or something or if they just leave a comment. Yeah, that's that, like that's that already know. You already know that they've but seen it. Yeah. And mi- almost a million other people have seen it, so that's pretty cool too. So. Yeah, precisely. Um, yeah. Well, if anything, anything more outstanding you want to show off or. Um. Uh, this is like free advertising for you. Yeah. <laughs> this is the YouTube advertising tra- uh, yeah. episode. <laughs> Let's see. Our last guy talked about crypto. Yeah, I'm not. So I'm this not is a big contrast. I'm not into crypto. <laughs> this is a big contrast. Um, I haven't really done anything else. I guess if if anyone listening likes sports videography, you can follow my Instagram. It's Jaden's Creative Stuff. Um, oh, like that Instagram. Yeah, um, I I just take videos of sports and make cool edits. So yeah, but that's that's pretty much it. That's me. That's right. I'm, I make music. I like sports. I have fun. So that sounds good. That's me. That, that's that's you. Yeah. All right. I guess before we wrap up this this episode for good, that's well, I guess we, we have some stuff that I can't show you. Um, I don't know. What do you want to see? <laughs> let, let me hear a little snippet of one of your songs. Um, sure. In fact, I'll show you the music video. Yeah, I'd love to see it. And then Actually, uh, I'll search it up on your Okay, yeah. Here, like what, what's it called? We're all hunching over a phone. It's not that What's good. it called? <laughs> Big City Dreams. Big City oh boy. <laughs> Dreams. And then it's not the one with 8.4 million views, is it? Uh, I wish. <laughs> Damn. When did you... No, no, that, so no, no, I think it's about the song. No, we're not showing that. It's the third one. It's the, the third one. Yeah. You almost had a thousand subscribers. Wait, I've I've watched the video. What the heck? You have? This is you? Oh yeah, this was us. I guess I've watched one of your videos. Well, this was the last song we put out. It's a cover, but maybe maybe you posted it on your Instagram and then I watched it. Oh, maybe. This was in 2021, like near the end of summer. And what's your role in this? I don't sing on this song. No. But like, my part was just to film the intro. Okay, I want to hear one that you sing on. Uh, okay. Actually, let me show you our. Some it's like similar to your Jeff Gibbons video. Um, we did a really sick music video out of it. It is called Old Friends. Where is it? Uh, scroll down a little bit. Right here. It has 27k views. Somewhere. Oh yeah, there. Oh, you both. Also I've seen, seen, seen this one too. <laughs> God damn. All right. <laughs> Little SBC. Uh, you can ask Jaden about him. He knows him. Oh, yeah, J Ma. This is kind of like what you guys were doing. Yeah. yeah. I look like I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> he just wandered He's into got the, the money shit. out. Yeah. He's got the money out. That's awesome. So. Without revealing anything secret, this was filmed. Okay, yeah. And another half of it was filmed at a, there, our old high school, the old old one. Why is the camera shaking so much? <laughs> when did you make this? 2019. Nice. Old archives, eh? <laughs> This was not a cheap song to make. You say it wasn't cheap? Why? I mean, how much do you think he's holding right there? <laughs> but like, unless you're losing it, it's not going away. Ah, uh, well... When it comes to collaborations with other artists, some of this is involved. How much? I mean, I, I, don't, I, don't, I guess you don't want to I don't want to say it, but it's like... Pretty sure he spent it all though at this point. 
Was that the whole paycheck? <laughs> holding? Was he holding his paycheck? No. <laughs> it was a combination of all our bank accounts, so it just looks like he has a lot of money. The thing about this song is it has a beat drop. Oh yeah. That was like the one thing we wanted to set up different from the typical rap song. I'll say the background music is kind of too loud here, I think. Yeah. His voice isn't... No. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> 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 Well, the director said it looks sad, so that was supposed to be good. <laughs> Fun fact about that shot, he was standing on top of a trash can to make himself look taller. <laughs> you look very bored. No, it was very sunny. <laughs> That's quite the jump there. That's the beat drop. What you don't see is, as soon as he threw the cash, all of us scrambled to pick it all up before they all got lost. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah. Good that's, stuff. That's our top song. And you, you want to you wanna listen to one where I'm in it, right? Yeah. So... Give me a little snippet of... Uh, not on this channel, actually. No. No, we're not showing him takeaway. <laughs> no takeaway. <laughs> should, we, should we show the documentary someone made on you? Uh, that can be the last thing. Yeah. Wasn't expecting that. We filmed this in the game. Wow. Um, they had this thing called, um, replay mode. Okay. So we acted it in the game, and then using replay mode, we had, like, all the camera angles. That was my DJ voice. <laughs> oh, he intros the song. Really? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you did? Okay, well, not that part, but uh, right after. <laughs> That's him. Wait. <laughs> Do you know it was your voice was in there? No. You just took his voice off his permission. No, because it was for like the Crystal Yeah, right? then you used it for this. <laughs> <laughs> it's just me and my classmates. When's your part? Thinking of something that rhymes. Yeah, we'll just watch the whole thing. <laughs> we'll get to my part. That's Darren. <laughs> the, the mic quality just changed. Yeah. <laughs> well, we all... We, this was all filmed with, like, different people different places. <laughs> different time. Yeah, you should have gone, like, recording studio for this. No, he literally just held one of, like, not this exact mic, but, like, one of these mics and just... It was very close. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> Is this you? No. No. 
Since we're not there yet. Uh, yeah, you're taking your sweet time, right? I come, in, I come in after the second chorus, okay? There you go, now you know. <laughs> I don't even know which chorus we're on. I think I, I think Oz asked you to be in this video, and you were like, "No." <laughs> I did. Yeah. He asked me. I don't. I don't remember that. Didn't want to rap about Fortnite. This was probably like three. This is a long time. This is 2018. Okay, then I, I completely forgot. Around the Halloween time. Oh, and yeah. the pumpkin skin. I probably can't rap anyway, so. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Nice. I sound very different. You sound like a voice, kind of a voice. Yeah, cat. yeah. Compared to what I sound like now. <laughs> Chorus kind of slaps. Best part. <laughs> Not even my verse. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh, well, that's that's the credits. The credits is all their gamer tags because we were very obnoxious about using our real names during that time. But so. That was basically about Jaden, and uh, any final words you guys want to say to him? I think your your stuff is good, like good quality overall. Thank you, I appreciate like, it. Like ironically, your the stuff that got a lot of views is low quality, yeah, and then right? the stuff that doesn't get views is high exactly. quality. Yeah, just kind of funny. Good work. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you guys for having me. Shout out to. Mark 45 podcast, all you guys, you do good work. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. Of course. And most importantly, thank you for coming all the way out here to do this because I know it's not an easy, yeah, no easy commute for you. Um, yeah, he went out of his way to do this with us. Like I went, I asked him to do this episode like a month ago. Mm -hmm. So it's good. We yeah, had I'm glad that we prep. got to do it. Yeah. yeah. And who knows? Maybe we might do a follow up with, maybe with one day. the other we'll Jaden. See if the fans want it. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Um, of course, check out his work. Uh, he has more coming. Mm. I assume you have more work I do, that you're yes. cooking up I in the am kitchen. Always cooking. <laughs> All right. I guess we'll we'll be on the lookout when he posts those, and you can do that by hitting the bell next to the subscribe button, mm -hmm. so you'll be notified the second they come out. As for now, oh, do the same thing on our channel too, please, yes. so you don't miss an episode. Subscribe to these guys. As for now, that's it for this episode. Check out our uh, ep guest episode with Danny if you missed it. That is most likely coming up before this one. But you'll probably see this one April, I assume. We'll see. We'll see how long it takes for me to edit. Um, yeah, as for now. Oh, also, check us out on Spotify. The big one. <laughs> and yeah, we'll see what happens from there. As for now, we'll wrap it up here. Thanks for watching. Peace we'll out. see you in the next one. Peace out.